Pray with me, please. Loving God, we are so connected with one another and enjoying this music and this evening, this special evening in the life of our congregation and all Christianity. We're thankful for the ways in which this time is an opportunity for us to begin again to receive into our lives the love that is given through the divine Christ child. We are grateful for all that has been given to us in this year and look forward to the ways in which we are able to take this love with us out into the world for another year to come. We are grateful for this time together and for the word as it speaks to us in these ancient verses. And we pray now that in the words that are in our head and on the paper and in the songs, there is a word that comes to each of us that is what you have for us by your anointing in this time. Continue to bless us as we worship together. And let it be that the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth are acceptable to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. In the Jewish Passover meal ritual, the youngest person at the meal asks the elders, how is this night different from every other night? The answer comes as the story unfolds about the enslaved Hebrew people escaping their oppressors and finding their way to a better life. Along the way, they have many tumultuous experiences which inspire their identity for ages to this day. Those memories are experienced metaphorically in the words they recite and the foods on the Passover plate, which the gathered groups share. In present-day secular society, one of the ways these few weeks in December are unlike all the other weeks is that we are hearing Christmas carols and holiday songs playing incessantly on at least three channels of Cirrus XM radio, the TV cable music channels, AM and FM radio, and the mall and restaurant speaker systems. Now there is one Christmas song that we do not hear as much. That's probably because it's not like the other Christmas songs. It's called Happy Xmas, War is Over. And it was written and, and presented by John Lennon and Yoko Ono in 1972. It's an inheritance of the Vietnam War era that we are given and is not often noted. It was written in 1972, two years after John and Yoko's billboard campaign, which sent out a peace message in 12 major cities around the world. In large black letters on a white background, these giant billboards in Times Square and other places simply said, war is over. And then underneath it, it said, if you want it. Happy Christmas from John and Yoko. The lyrics of that song that hang with me are these. And so this is Christmas for weak and for strong, the rich and the poor ones, the road is so long. And so happy Christmas for black and for white, for yellow and red ones, let's stop all the fights. A very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year Let's hope it's a good one, without any fear. The purpose I have on each Christmas Eve is to insert into the ancient readings a bit of contemporary collusion. The message of these scriptures that we've heard and have yet to hear is a call for peace on earth and goodwill toward all in the hopes that all will do goodwill. That is a pretty simple message. 
but the implementation of that calling seems impossible to accomplish on a global scale. One of the reasons for that is that we human beings apparently do not all share the same values. Some seem to want war and chaos because that makes things great for them. But as a Christian who trusts the divine intention for peace and goodwill, I want to embrace again the hope of this night, which is not like any other. I want to remember the ancient and contemporary metaphorical language that helps us transition identities to better purposes. A great seminary professor and theologian wrote books of meditations and poetry in the 60s, 70s, and they were published even uh, in the 2000s. These meditations and poetry <coughs> help people like us turn and learn the metaphors of faith into practical applications. His name was Howard Thurman. One poem entitled The Work of Christmas is often referenced this time of year. It, it reads, when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring pre peace among brothers and sisters, to make music in the heart. A 2018 seminary student named uh, Brian Stiegel, Brian Stiegel Wright, published a prayer that speaks to our times on this night. It was published by the San Francisco Theological Seminary in a series of devotions that have been presented online in the last few weeks. The prayer reads, God, in your mercy, you have heard our prayers. God, in your love, you have done great things for us. We have cried to you and you have answered. Our answering will answer, coming to our aid as lion and lamb and love. Hallowed be thy name, the name of love. Powerful mother, devoted parent, you will not condone the suffering of your children. Love cannot abide hatred or oppression. Mercy cannot turn away from a soul's destruction. O God, whose power is love made manifest, tear down the structures that bind us. Dissolve the webs of hierarchies and hate. Set your shoulder to the systems that would shatter our souls. Set your shoulder underneath our own and lift us from oppression to life abundant. Calm thy kingdom. May it be on earth as it is in the heavens. We look forward and outward and inward and through to a time when, there sh when we shall be satisfied with justice, when waters will run clear and free, when none will hunger, when cold and heat and contempt will trouble us no more, when our bodies will be deemed enough, when our loves will be called divine, when we will be embraced instead of excluded. Come quickly, God, cast forth our oppressors. Come quickly, Father, Mother, Creator, Spirit, God, and heal our wounds. We hear you. We await you, God. Come swiftly. And now, in a few minutes, as we light our candles tonight, theologian Howard Thurman encourage each of, encourages each of us to follow his individual example. In another Christmas meditation, he wrote, I will light candles this Christmas, candles of joy despite all sadness, candles of hope where despair keeps watch, candles of courage for fears ever present, candles of peace for tempest-tossed days, 
Candles of grace to erase heavy burdens. Candles of love to inspire all my living. Candles that will burn all the year long. As we return home tonight and to our regularly scheduled lives, in the days to come, let's make it be that this night influences all our other days and nights. Let's make it that our metaphors become real and our good words become deeds. Let's ensure that our identities remain strong as people who are dedicated to giving God glory with peace on earth and goodwill to all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.